Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're starting up your meeting. This is the second time we've done a show like this on Zoom. Perfect. Zoom. I think I that's Zoom. how we need to start from now or on. Just like, just give me Zoom, just Zoom, 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 Zoom. Let me make Zoom. sure on the interwebs because that's what I do. I'm that kind of person. Um, I'm a Christian. You're you're a Christian. Um, yes, I, I was with a guy named Christian. Okay, okay, that that's what I thought. I was just making sure. <laughs> Similar but different. Yeah, um, I can I can see how people get that confused. Uh, I cracked open my Reds uh, Wicked Apple Ale. Um, <laughs> this is eight percent alcohol, so I'm moving. Wow. Yeah, you guys called me out. Uh, mainly Hannah and her mom called me out um, on being cheap drunk. Yeah. Um, I stand by that. This was a dollar more than what I would have paid. Well, that's why she gave you a tip. <laughs> she did. That really, honestly, I can't complain. You know what? <laughs> like, I'm loving the richer life. Thank you so much, Charlotte. <laughs> um, welcome to Fruit Fly Don't Bother Me. Um, a show, even though the title of our show says we don't want you to bother us, we do want to interact with you underneath uh, in the comments. So please. Comment away, we just love communicating. Um, today, we are talking about two great topics, okay? Um, I searched these a little bit before yesterday because I am a busy boy and I had a schedule. Um, so I looked them up and this weekend, the, it, these two were in the top and it is uh, Ray Dalio, we'll talk about him, and um, everyone's favorite uh, event happening this week, Christmas. I love Christmas. I love it. Uh, how are you preparing for Christmas, Han Han? Um, well, I've got all my shopping done. Really happy about that. That's a good mom. I usually finish it like the day of, so I'm really proud. Uh, I had two ladies sitting at my bar today. They came in and they were like, I, I was so stressed out. Can we get a shot? And I gave them shots and they were like, we haven't even bought Christmas presents for our kids yet. And I was like, okay, like Hannah, you already have them done. So like. I'm doing great. She's a great mom. Doing great. She's I've, I've got the cinnamon rolls for cooking. So yeah. I don't got to go to the grocery store. Yeah, that's great. I'm, it's I'm for a Christmas it. morning. Yeah. Yeah. Nick, that's what we have every Christmas morning is cinnamon rolls. I eat more than half of them. Well, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, it's just like, God will not let me gain weight. <laughs> just keep aggressive. Poor so you. Mm. Yeah, whatever. I'm probably riddled with cancer on the inside. So I just. <laughs> Given I by just your know. wine choices, I'd probably agree with that. Um, Joke's on you, cider. Um, <laughs> we are going to have, uh, this week has been very stressful. I think for both of us, uh, I had uh, a show that I had to put on uh, the first one that I'd ever done in like an actual theater uh, and with lights, just all that, trying to communicate that uh, to people who this is our first time all being together was the day of. So everyone did really well. Uh, we spread a little Christmas cheer. It's on my Facebook page, a seasonal serenade. If you want to give it a listen. I watch that shit. Yes, it is really, really good. Um, and I was, I was dealing with that while Hannah was dealing with the COVID scare. Oh, it's no big deal. I just got a little test today. Stand yes. by. It was, but in our in our group message, it seemed really like the end of the world. Uh, she thought- I mean, I'm, I'm a bit dramatic. I was recently exposed by someone, I won't say who, mystery, but um, it was no big deal. And um I just went ahead and got tested just in case. So my new yeah. job that I just got is actually a COVID contact tracer. So that's literally my job is to like call people and tell them that they need to quarantine and I know all the rules and stuff. So holla at your girl if you need some COVID uh, help because people already do. And um, so I know the drill. So I knew to just go get tested, but it was the first time I ever got tested. And let me tell you that I lost all childhood trauma memories. They're gone, I'm healed. Yeah. They just scraped them out with that Q-tip. 
I'm really impressed that you have a job that uh, requires you to draw the outlines of uh, viruses. You said you tr mm. trace viruses? Tracing. Oh, trace, yeah, like. Tracing, like I trace, I like trace where it came from. Oh, the lineage. Yes, no, That's like, like through people, like, like Joe has it. So I need to talk to Joe and find out all the people that he was in the room with when he had it. And then I need to call them. Yeah, I was like, like how, how do you, how do you trace molecules? <laughs> that was crazy. I was that was, like, I don't do that. It's like, we've got the next Albert Einstein over here in her Santa hat. Don't you love her little clip art Santa hat? I love this. It's so I cheerful. It. I got, uh, I didn't give a shit about mine because uh, I was supposed to get the white outline off of it, but uh, I was in such a rush and I was just like, it's for You're me. You're glowing. It's fine. It's good. I just, yeah, it's my, do they have elf hats that like are sort them into houses? Are there houses in the North Pole? You know, oh. I mean? Potter? I don't, I don't watch Harry Potter anyway, so I don't even know. Well, good thing that's not that. the topic. Um, tonight, we are going to start <laughs> with um, one. Remember last week when Hannah was like, oh, I don't know how good Nick's going to be at this because he doesn't know much. Um, it, it's true. Um, but I told you guys I hate reading. You, there's this cool thing if you want to hear about news, they normally make videos of them too. <laughs> so mm. those. Like a little um, documentary, but sure. Yeah, with like a picture book, but like no reading. Mm. So helpful. It's really like, where has this been? Has it been around? Um, no, but Ray Dalio, I think I'm saying his name right. He is a acclaimed author. He is wrote a whole bunch of books on basically um, entrepreneurship and being responsible with your money and ways to invest and uh, theories that he has set into place that just get people questioning what is happening, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, um, when I picked him as the topic, his son, unfortunately, died in a fatal car crash um, a day after I picked him. Which I feel like is concerning because, like, you have the tendency of causing bad shit to happen in the universe, Nicholas. No, I don't. Okay, this one night, me, Hannah, and a couple of our other comedy friends, we decided that we are witches. No big deal. Um, so she had some sage at her house, a whole bunch of crystals. So if anyone's a witch here for real, it's her. Cause it's already at her house. You know what I mean? So she, I was like, why don't we just have a seance to bring some good into the world? You know, yeah. that's not how they work. Um, we had it. She got done uh, right about to put this, uh, the sage out to cleanse the room. And as soon as she puts it out, uh, her roommate comes in the room like, um, I'm so I just got a call and my brother just got in a motorcycle accident and it was like bad <laughs> without missing a beat she was super concerned because she's there live in person and I was like did we cause this we just did that is that like, us did we just do that <laughs> we're are we the new power rangers <laughs> it's not it. so yeah that's why she thinks by me picking him that that's why his son and Not this is your fault this time because I didn't another burn crash. any stage for this guy. It's another crash. What? It was another crash. Like a vehicle accident. Oh, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like we cause crashes, apparently. I'm an automotive witch. <laughs> That's what I have. I can only affect cars. Uh, You're the transportation witch. Yeah, horses on a good day. Like Pete Buttigieg is the guy for transportation. You're the witch. <laughs> Yeah, I should really give uh, Budapest a call. <laughs> I love you. So I love your. Hey, Willie. Use my box. Okay, so, well. anyways, I'm going to give you a quick rundown. Since he has all this money, his child uh, is not a child anymore. He's a grown ass man and is probably making bad decisions. There are a lot of articles about him uh, doing what most people who have a lot of money do that are young, in, overindulging in drugs, alcohol things of that nature. Well, his car accident that killed him, he drove straight into a Verizon wireless store, okay? And blew, the car blew up inside of the store, okay? So it's like a shopping mall, okay? 
they're like questioning if drugs were involved or alcohol. Did, there, did people no in the one, store get injured? No, it was, uh, I think it was like closed at the time. It was like late. It was like 10 or something. Wow. But they're questioning if alcohol or drugs was involved. Bitch, no one just actively drives into a Verizon wireless store. No, it's right? got to be something. You know what I mean? Nobody's sober anyway. No, it's like, you know what? My bill was outrageous this month. <laughs> you know what I mean? I no. want a free Samsung Galaxy. No, yeah. So, and he was in an Audi. Okay. And Audi is expensive. Like, oh. galaxies that the Audi could transfer for. So, he would have gotten an iPhone. Got it. <clears throat> yeah. So, pretty much, verdict's not out yet, but I'm pretty sure he was under the influence. Um, his dad the next day uh, sent out a message on Twitter uh, thanking everyone who had been messaging him and how hard it was and how difficult of a time it was for his family. Mm -hmm. The next day, he's at some sort of like fucking summons somewhere doing like a TED talk on how the, uh, the wealth gap in America could really separate the United States. And I was like, people have known that well it's not news well yeah it's made yeah. each other and it's a bigger well, stimulus check Ray. and that's not even my biggest issue like why are you out when your son just passed away that like, is concerning after it's just it's something's not right there maybe we'll get more of this story in a netflix original that would mm, be we can only hope casting jean benet you know oh or the ted bundy <clears throat> tapes man that's some good shit i could see how people if i was alive back then i would have been one of those girls you would have gotten in ted's trunk that scares me <laughs> i've done it you know what i mean i've done it <laughs> i would have done it um also side note uh a couple of days ago when this was popular on the uh internet on google there were a couple um pop-ups in the search engine that he something about his son being kidnapped but now I look back and I can't find any of that. So I don't know if there's more going on to this story that we don't know about. And you're getting all your information from somebody who really, I just learned how to pronounce his last name and I'm not even positive I'm saying that right. You're probably not, if we're being totally honest. It's probably like Dalios. <laughs> the S is in there, but it's present. Dalio. Um, now I'm going to let Hannah introduce what we're talking about next. Christmas. First of all, Nick, can you believe it? What did you ask Santa for Christmas? Um. Okay, I had a snarky comment, but I'm not going to say it because um, I mind it's Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, Santa is a great guy because I too enjoy believing lies. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, we'll start with that. Um, mm -hmm. just cause he's a, he's a habitual liar. Um, yeah. I asked Santa for, um, honestly, I didn't ask him for anything what? before the show. And no, I didn't. Um, honestly, me and my fiance aren't getting each other presents for Christmas because our wedding is Cause you're trying to get hitched. Yeah. And we, uh, I don't want any of my family to help pay for it nor I would I think they would offer because they my family is the kind of people that if so, they paid for something and I got irritated at them at some point during the wedding they'd be like oh you remember when they paid for that <laughs> they love I, just kind of people. That. I just don't need that so we're very mm -hmm. proud of for it for ourselves and so honestly I wasn't expecting anything for Christmas I think what I would want the most is just for people to really, it's only a couple of days till Christmas, like two and a half. Literally two days. Rest of this. Yeah. I want people to really enjoy Christmas and really try to like look at the positives and not focus on the negatives uh, that are going on in our lives. Unless they're negative coronavirus tests. No. Yeah. And then it's just like the vaccine is what I want, you know, right now. <laughs> I would like real peace for Christmas. Yeah. Um, tell us a real piece of pizza, a real piece of pizza. That's what she was. 
I want our viewers to tell us in the comments what you wanted for Christmas. Let's talk about the hottest items. I asked Santa for AirPods because I am a basic bitch and I like expensive things. And because I'm trying to be a Zoom comic and that's very difficult when I've got children and no headphones that, with, that have good mics. It just yeah. seems reasonable to me. I didn't ask for a ring light. I've got a lamp. I can make do. I'm trying you. here. <laughs> um, so I um for my kids though, the hottest thing this year uh that literally dropped like a day ago, which I'm pissed about. Barbie came out with a new Barbie. Did you hear about this? No. It is okay. Oh, because I'm a gay, like, I have to know when Barbie's dropping. Yeah, it's pretty epic, actually. It's called Barbie Extra, so I'm all about that. It's these girls that have, like, really extravagant outfits and, like, amazing hair. Like, this one girl has, like, a giant fro, and then one girl has, like, hair, like blue braids down to her feet. And they oh, got, like, so, like, giant, JoJo Siwa. But, but way better. Like, way fancier and classier. You can get better than fancy. JoJo Siwa? Uh, yeah, you can easily. Okay, come on. Whatever, now. Abby Miller. You, oh, she can dance. No. She can no. dance. Sit down. Do not talk to me about that. Don't get in my face. <sighs> that show was golden. There were so many fights in front of children that I, I wave was... my hands, but the more I drink, I just like get really. I like it. That's exactly you're training the house or dance moms. Mm -hmm. It was just like. So many fights you see on that show that are just like, this is clearly something this child shouldn't be seeing, but I don't mm -hmm. care because it's far too entertaining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, no, a, okay. that's a weird place to be. So my children are like, oh my gosh, Barbie extra, look at all these Barbies. And the one that of course my daughter wanted the most, I look it up immediately. I'm like, oh shit, this is, this like just dropped. I better order this now. And, um, not only did I not like I couldn't find it forever and then when I finally did find it they were like this will be available January 5th a Barbie you did me wrong sis yeah it's like that uh do you know when Christmas is right like excuse excuse me that's not when Christmas is and so I did find one I did find one tell me about it I got it and it's one, it's not the one that she wanted. The one that she wanted is not available till next month, but I did get one of them and she is just mess fabulous. I'm so excited about it. I'm gonna, I'll That's bring cute. her next week. I'll just, she'll just sit with me because she's so extra and fantastic. I love that. Um, I have a Barbie segue story, uh, it's Christmas related. Um, I grew up in Iowa um, and- You weren't I allowed to like Barbies. No, yeah, we weren't, but I still. Braided. That turned out great for you. I did. Um, you can dye their hair with uh, Kool Aid, which is all we could afford. Oh, so uh, fun! <laughs> so fun to be poor. Um, no, but we <laughs> lived in a house. Uh, and it was a yellow house on Wilshire Lane. Okay, and we had my sisters got Barbies, and they were like plastic Barbies, like hard Barbies, not like the rubbery kind. Mm -hmm. So. I took, it was, they were in a box set, like a huge box set. Um, and I took them out uh, while my sisters were at their friends' houses for a sleepover the day after Christmas. And uh, my, I was hiding from everyone, not telling them what I was doing. And I went outside in like two feet of snow. I just threw them in the air uh, after I crushed their heads with a hammer. Oh and my God. I threw their bodies into the snow because then even if my sisters were looking for them, they couldn't find them. And when they did find them, it would be in uh, the spring when the snow melts. Oh my God. You're terrible. You're Is that a serial bunny. killer? That's yeah. Not... yeah, it's a no. documentary series. No. There's your docu-series, had... Netflix. Nick knows how to dismember Barbies and hide them in snow so that he can't be traced. No, okay, until springtime. Um, no. Surprise you a couple months. No, I'm not a serial killer because one time a kitten died in my hands and I was like, I couldn't move for an hour because I was so sad sobbing into like the kitten in my hands. I went outside and dug a hole and buried it in the woods. That's really sad. But as far as we know, that was your first experience with death and you've been chasing that high ever since. 
Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just waiting to hang out with people that are almost gonna die. So I can't, I don't have to kill them. Mm. It's getting, I just, I tried everything. But you know the process now. So if they did, it's no big deal. I should work at a retirement home. Brilliant. They would love you. I'm applying tomorrow. <laughs> They really mm -hmm. need your help right now, actually. So they really do. They really, I just want to be there to help them like enjoy the rest of the life. They really life. want bartenders to be there right now. Yeah, because they should enjoy their lives because there's not much left. Mm, that's <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> um, but we, Christmas, there's a lot of things uh, as children that we're told about Christmas that we just have to believe, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when you're smart like me, you figure things out pretty early because you're sneaky and don't stay in your room when your parents tell you to. Right. Yeah. Like, I definitely walked out to my parents putting presents under the tree. And I'm like, Mom, what are you doing? And my mom, I guess because she couldn't think of anything quick enough, she was like, Santa's not real. Go to sleep. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And that's how you found out? <laughs> Well, yeah, that's how that's I found tragic. My mom doesn't believe in Santa because he's real. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> he might be within earshot. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you. What are some <laughs> things about Christmas that you like did as a child that now you're like, you question like why? That's a great question. Um, I used to be like the master at guessing what was under the tree. Yeah. I like they, my brothers would send me to the tree and be like, tell us what we got. She and there was one year in two I was like shakes. seven years old. <laughs> I, it was like, I, I was like Rain Man. I guessed every single gift under the tree. Seven years old. I picked up every single one. I mean, Legos, that's easy. But then, like, my older brother got a bottle of cologne. Cologne. I got a doll that came with like different clothes. And I specifically was like, this is a doll, but it comes in a big box because it comes with extra outfits. And the second outfit has polka dots. <laughs> <laughs> One's floral. <laughs> no, it was the uh, 90s. Of course it was floral. I truly believe that every, like certain people have like, um, you hear people say deja vu all the time or like mm -hmm. I'll have very vivid dreams where I can, I can remember like two days later where I'm like, I opened the uh, fridge and there were six yellow Gatorades, four red. Like there's- Rain Man shit. I'm telling you, I've got I'm telling the you, Rain Man sense. I think that we could have been like Sylvia Brown on the Montel Williams show. Or we would have been burnt at the stake had we had been born a century sooner. No, yeah, but then we could just blame it on comedy. We could be like, oh, we just said we were witches because- <laughs> Because it's funny. Because it's a bit. It's for, it's for a bit. <laughs> it's good. Kind of like how TJ and was hitting on Roxy and he was like, it's a bit. <laughs> and then he got so, married a week later. <laughs> listen, I'm going to tell you, side note, I saw that he was engaged. Um, and then the next day he said that he was having a Zoom reception. He's married. Okay. I mean, good for him. I was like, I the show. I remember the last show we did with him. He said his wife was mad at the end that he was hitting on Roxy so much. And no, just, she was mad because I catfished him. She she should be mad that he made her a ring out of construction paper. Okay. I just say, I love you, TJ. I do love you. Oh my God, he's not watching oh. this. He's on his honeymoon, right? No, he's, it, well, his honeymoon is probably on Zoom. <laughs> he's probably Zooming it. You know what, TJ, I, I love you. you. I've met his uh, his now wife in person at a comedy show and uh, I really endorsed their relationship because she laughed more at my set than at his. Oh, God uh, bless her. So you know she's honest, you know? Oh, she looks like a peach and I just want to get to know her. Yeah, uh, yeah, a little. That sounded forced, but I really meant it. <laughs> it sounded a little lesbian. Um, <laughs> it's a peach. I want to get to know her. I want to get Jeff, to Jeff of who said she that is. He wants Doritos Locos Tacos for Christmas, and um, I feel like you're asking for too much. 
uh, I personally know that Dev ate four things of ramen yesterday. So, One time? Yeah. Oh my God. I'm so happy. I can relate to someone on that. You no, know, I think he's going to die. I think this is it. Like he ate it and I was like, oh my God, tell us next time you poop. Cause I think it's not going to be for a month. No, I'm telling you, there will be times that I come into the house. I eat three packages of ramen at a time, period. There's oh my God. Three, yeah. it's three packages. Why doesn't digest that? Look, tell me it's not digesting it. You fucking tell me, look at this snack ass body look at this snatched um no but uh that's why I always tell people that I think my body is riddled with cancer because there's no way that I literally will pick ramen over other food my fiance's just made <laughs> like it's a love that's terrible it's terrible I think it's good because it doesn't cost a lot to like get me groceries I mean, it's 25 cents or something. It's 25 cents. Um, what is the worst present you've ever gotten for Christmas? Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be really kind. I'm going to try to be really kind. Oh God. It might not have been intentional, but... This person's watching. Uh, uh, probably. Um, it might not have been intentional, but when Clint and I first got married, his, um, his, uh, family members are, uh, were, uh, wealthier than I had ever experienced. And, um, I was mailed a formal invitation to Thanksgiving dinner that requested an RSVP. And in my mind, I was like, I've never RSVP to anything, family, anything. So I didn't RSVP. If anything, I thought that's cute. And I didn't RSVP. It's, hold on. I'm just confused. How is, are you, are, are you confused? You're, you might have overbooked who's coming. I'm, why do you do RSVP? I just wanted a head count be, before they like ordered. You know what I mean? Yeah, she asked you to send a headshot they could put in the brochure of the guest. <laughs> maybe, like, maybe it was something like that. So I don't know. Stand by. So I didn't RSVP. Nobody said a word, so I thought no big deal. Okay, so Christmas. Morning. Of course, I'm coming. <laughs> so Christmas morning. Okay, I did go to Thanksgiving, and she did make a little like, "Oh, you're here," and I was like, "Yeah, it's Thanksgiving." You're not on my head count. Right. Okay, so, so some time passes and it's Christmas day. And my gift under the tree with my name on it was a book on party etiquette. Like how to be a better person in party etiquette? How to be a better person. How to not be sloppy, essentially. And how to like RSVP. They had a special and I like showed it to my husband and I was like, oh my God. And he goes, oh my God. And that has gone in history as like the greatest, most backhanded gift in the history of the family. And it was hysterical. It might not have been intentional. It could have been a coincidence. They asked, I bet you, you are the only person they asked to RSVP. They, like everyone else. I don't think I've ever been asked to RSVP since. They would just somebody would just text me and be like, "Hey, are you coming?" Like, oh so, yeah, like because of that. Because of that year, they were like, "Okay, this didn't work. <laughs> we're gonna do it a different way." I know they were like, "Well, now we just got a text her, and that's not formal, but at least we get a reply." Yeah, and they don't want to really communicate. You know, I think. So was what's the worst gift you ever got? Okay, I have um, uh, like two stories. One is the worst present I ever got. Um, when I get a bad present, I'm very vocal about it. Um, I'm not very shy about like pretending that this was a good present. I don't believe in that. Um, and so uh, I have a story about me hating a present and then a story about my brother being really mean to my grandma. It's really good. Okay, so the present that I hated um, my family didn't love each other. The siblings didn't love each other enough to get every one of the siblings a present. So we did like a secret Santa to see who we got. 
Oh, shit. And, yeah, because they come from a big, big Italian family um, and three dads that fathered. So, um, you know, it's, it's a little, it's a mutt mix. Um, and so yeah. I, my sister, Lindsay, who um, I've always thought is just jealous of me because uh, she wanted to be a singer and uh, she was practicing a song in the living room and I came out and I saw her practicing and she was singing On My Own from Les Mis and uh, she hit a part and then she saw me looking at her and she's like, get the fuck out. And ever since that day, I just think that she's been jealous of my talent. Um, and she got me one year I was in seventh grade. Okay, so I'm in middle school now, all right? So I'm not telling people at all that I watch cartoons still. I don't care. People don't need to know that I'm sleeping with a stuffed animal's Pikachu in my bed. And None of their business. Yeah, Tinky Winky is at the bottom. He's just looking out. Um, but my sister got me a, uh, a large T-shirt that was a Pokemon T-shirt, had all the Pokemon on it. Okay, cool. Um, I'm a small, yeah, small you're a big boy. an extra small. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you want me to do with like a tent. beach towel? <laughs> I'm not gonna, what do you want me to do with this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and, and so I was very vocal in the moment and said, why would you even get this for me? It's not even my size. And my sister went in the room and started crying. Uh, I guess is what I can remember. I feel bad. I didn't care. Okay. She's, this is, my 14th year of life and she's known me that long and this hey, you just owned your little gay 90s boy self and just scrunchied that corner up and cut a big hole so it fell off the shoulder and just made this it isn't work. the 80s this isn't the 80s it's not homecoming week um, <laughs> no so i got back at her like any good brother does um, my sister had bunk beds in her room one bunk went under the top bunk like this. So it was like a little cave. Uh, my sister had shelves in there that had all of the in sync, no strings attached dolls. Oh, on. God bless. So while she was at a friend's house, I snuck in her room and masturbated to them. So um, I think, who's laughing now? <laughs> but um, the, <laughs> I know, I'm the worst. It's good. I didn't see where that was going and it took a turn and I liked it. They did. Those strings didn't work quite the same. After, um, they, they don't. Was, they don't after a, that. A little stiffer. Yeah, um, it's, it's harder to maneuver with. It's good. Her brother, her brother on them. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, the other story I need to share, because I always tell my brother, Brandon, he's a year older than me, and we used to share a room all through high school, everything. So I used to feel the vibrations of him masturbating above me. <laughs> oh, tough time. You would never know what that's like. Mm -hmm. um, but he, so we have a very close relationship. He's uh, not that close, but he is um, very inappropriate. And I always tell him that he should do comedy because he's kind of like my inspiration for how raw I am when I do comedy. Because when I was little, my brother said that he thought there was a business to sell stillborn baby horses to children as toys. Oh my God. He's like, how much glue are you really gonna get out of them? You know? Oh my God. My so, yeah, good. so yeah, you think I'm fucked up. That's my brother. That's pretty good. And so since he won't do comedy, I'm gonna share a story that he will be embarrassed I told. Um, at my grandma's house, my grandma had, it's an Italian family, so she had a lot of grandkids. And instead of buying each one of us a stocking, she just went to Walmart and got a uh, big uh, sack of uh, tube socks. Sucks. Tube yeah. socks. And she'd get a thick ass Sharpie and write our names going down the tube sock, okay? Mm. Now my grandma at this time was, uh, I don't know, maybe had arthrit arthritic hands and was not that smart because she definitely always misspelt my name. Um, Ugh, bitch. You know, I would have even accepted the K to be at the end of it, but yeah. uh, it wasn't even that kind of mistake. It was like knack, knack, this is <laughs> knack. And so we were going through our tube socks uh, Christmas morning um, and my brother got to the bottom of his and just sifted through all the candy bullshit to get to the money because that's really what's at the bottom. Right. 
this year, my grandparents were a little stingy and only put a $20 bill at the bottom. And my brother literally <laughs> got up from sitting Indian style next to me, walked over to my grandma and my grandpa, who's in overalls, and said, this isn't a Christmas present and dropped it in front of him and then turned around and walked back towards me and was like, that's the shittiest Christmas present ever. <laughs> oh my God. But I respect my brother so much for being so like raw. Oh my God. Brandon's a little bitch. He is. Brandon Lee Hawk. That's the worst. If that was my child, we're leaving. I almost Maybe wanted to I almost wanted to co-sign and scream like, spell my name right, bitch. <laughs> you know, but I just figured her pack was too down. She couldn't hear it. May she rest in peace. Your uh, relative no, she is, is uh, coming at you for. She is really dead, though. I mean, I see that. I see the comment right there. Lindsay, I'm sorry. And uh, Nick. Oh, my God, lost. Lindsay. Way to go. Okay. Telling that story. This is, uh, Side note, after this, I'm going to let you talk a whole bunch. I swear, Hannah, I knew this episode was going to go long. Since <laughs> my sister's watching, um, Melissa, Lindsay, my sister who's watching, um, during the holidays, it's a little bit more of a stressful time for us. And my sister, who is judging me for saying a comment about grandma, um, slammed my brother Brandon's head against the wall and made his nose bleed. So I don't really feel like she has a leg <laughs> to stand on. But uh, yeah, like and, I, and, you would be friends. and I fucked up your Barbies. <laughs> so. yeah, can we talk about that? Because my brothers, I'm traumatized from the torture that my brothers did on my Barbies. They used to I think it's just them. a boy thing. They used to grill them. What do you mean? Like actual like on the grill, like light the charcoal grill <laughs> and grill them. I had a kin who was white, turned black. I had questions. No, yeah, I thought you meant like your, your brothers were like, this Barbie's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the 90s. That wasn't a thing that we did. We didn't yeah, grill it was actually like least. putting them on the Barbie. No, oh my God, yes. Maybe they thought they were being funny. Full circle. Maybe they thought if they did that, they would become Australian. Oh, my cousin Michael is on here. <laughs> Okay, see, now this has turned into a whole family Christmas episode. Michael used to torture my Barbies with my brothers, and they actually used to feed my Barbies to the dogs and then put them on the trampoline and jump with them on it, and then one time grabbed my Barbie and threw it in the alley, and I was really mad about that, Michael. But do you think, like, at any time during this set, like, maybe you deserve it? <laughs> you don't you don't think at any time during this that like maybe you deserved it? No, I never did. I was perfect. I was the perfect child, Nicholas. Okay, so perfect that you feel complete with pink hair now. Okay, so you know what I am I have mild depression now, but and I might have like marks. some kind of crazy. I'm 32 and need to feel some kind of self worth. Okay, you know. To watch my know Zoom me. show. So just watch my Zoom show. I wonder if my therapist is on here. <laughs> no, honestly, I feel like I should go to you and Anna's therapist because like maybe I'll get a discount. Hey, this I'm going to tell you right now, my therapist is so magnificent. She sees like eight of my friends. Okay. Yep. I'm going to, yeah. Sounds like a group on. I, uh, I mean, I'm punching the card <laughs> faster I'm sure. Well, um, I'm pretty sure I'm responsible for her yacht now. What is how uh, crazy I am? What's your most uh, messed up? Uh, I'm gonna give you time to think about it because I already know what mine is. Okay. What What is the most messed up uh, family situation that has happened around Christmas? Oh my god. Yeah, I'm gonna give you time to think. My sister, since she's watching, I just really want to call her out more. Um, we. My parents used to have an old uh, station wagon, okay, with like the wood on the side, okay, and the bucket seat in the back where it was facing towards the back window, which there's no way that was fucking safe. No, there's no way, but my parents didn't care. They just threw the back at us and we're just like, shut the fuck up. Right. Um, 
Well, we were at my grandma Graber's at her house um, and we were all going back home and my dad laid down all the seats in the back seat. So all the kids, it was late. We could just lay down and go to sleep. They had blankets. My mom is very prepared like that. She brings blankets because she's cold in a fucking olive garden. You know what I mean? She has a blanket she out of her bag. Um, so we were laying back there. My dad was driving home from uh, Monmouth, Illinois. Shout out Monmouth. Yeah. Um, and they were driving home and all of us in the back started vomiting, like in the back of this station wagon. Um, and I'm not 100% sure that anyone cleaned it up. Like as we were driving home, I think that they just kept letting us throw up in the back seat of the station wagon. Lindsay, if you have any more information, please chime in. Um, people ask why I'm weird and scarred. Um, it's they don't want you sitting your own sick. It's not just because the voice. <laughs> There's right. other, trauma. Like, yeah, trauma, past trauma. Anytime someone does something weird around me or they like don't give me the reaction that I want, I'm just like, oh, I guess it's past trauma. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody's got their own trauma. No, yeah. Dress it up how you want. But yeah. what was your family Christmas moment? Okay, so ask me the question one more time. Are we looking for like traumatic or like ridiculous? No, well, I mean, I prefer to go deep to the bone. Um, no, just a, a uncomfortable family situation that happened a, like around Christmas time. Jesus. Um, listen. I could, I'm going to stay light because it's Christmas. Oh, God. And I'm worried that I'll go too far. Michael, this one's for you, actually. This is good. I hope you're still watching. Um, this is, I was telling this story just the other day because I think it's like my earliest <laughs> Christmas memory. I was probably four and my brother got um, like a little handheld game Game Boys weren't a thing yet. So it was before Game Boys. It was probably some like Galaga or something. And um, that's how old I am. You just, you just put fucking syllables together. Galaga. Galaga. Well, it was, um, it was probably some, I don't know, Asian company like Galaga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I start. Listen, be nice. I had a COVID test. I'm scrambled. Okay. So, um, my brother got a handheld game, okay? And a couple of hours after everybody's opened all their presents, my uncle Wes, Michael's dad, was playing with the handheld. And my four-year-old little self who had never, ever, still to this day, like never like come after grownups. Like I don't, I don't like confrontation. Yeah. My little pippy ass self went up to my uncle Wes and I snatched that Game Boy out of his hand. And I was like, that's not yours. That's my brother's. He just opened it. You can't play it. And then I just walked it over to my brother and handed it to him. And every adult in the room was like, what just happened? They're like, she's going to have pink hair one day. <laughs> Look at that girl, trauma. <laughs> and fiery. So they, um, I got into a lot of trouble and I had to apologize to my uncle and um, give him the game back and let him finish his turn. Mm -hmm. um, I think about uh, like, what was the, uh, what was the present that you got when you were not present, but what was, um, hold on, let me think about this for a minute. This red. Okay. Think on it. What is your, um, when you think of Christmas, what is like the first thing that like you think of that makes you just like beam with Christmas? I feel like everyone has this in them, like something that like just makes you turn into a child again. Mm, that's a good Mine question. Anytime I hear Christmas music. Anytime. Okay. Like Mariah Carey. Uh. No, fuck her. Get out. Um, did you see she just released a Christmas uh, cover with uh, Jennifer Hudson and Ariana Grande? Yeah, I'm, I haven't listened to it yet. But Watch okay? the video. Literally, it focuses on Ariana and Jennifer Hudson. Like it zooms in on them a lot. And then it literally looks so desperate for Mariah Carey because anytime she comes in, she's just like, oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yes. Just trying to prove. Just it's like Fergie with this. The why would you yeah. ever sing a jazz version of the national anthem? Why I love why would no I one on her team? That. No one on her team, they're all on the naughty list because no one was like, you know what? This probably isn't a good idea. They were yeah. like, girl, that sounds great. I'm refilling this. Michael just told me that I needed to tell one story and I agree. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I'm so sorry, Michael. I just talked too much, go. No, I love him. He's he's helping me out right now. I love, we're just plowing through childhood traumas. This wasn't childhood. Like we were all grown, okay? So my maiden name is Fletcher. I don't know if anybody knows that, but I'm a Fletcher and Fletchers cut their names from bow and arrow makers. They were bow and arrow makers. That's like our lineage, right? So like 10 years ago, me, my cousins, my brothers, I'm one of seven. Like we have a very tight, large family. And we all said we need to have a matching tattoo and it needs to be like Fletcher. And I didn't want the seal. So I said, let's all get arrows on our bodies. Let's all get matching tattoos and we'll be arrows. And, um, we, we, so one Christmas, uh, Michael was in town and everybody was there and we hadn't seen each other in a long time. So I was like, let's go, let's like all go get tattoos. Let's all go. We're going to go get arrows like right now. And my grandmother makes she rest in peace. And I love her, love her more than in this world. Praise her. My grandmother stood up and goes, luck you're either for God or you're not. And then walked out of the room. Homegirl did not approve of tattoos because the Bible tells me so. No, yeah. And we made her angry when we were talking about getting Fletcher tattoos. <laughs> she later came back and was like, I'm sorry, that was extreme. And then we all got our tattoos anyway. Oh, wait, wrong one. There we go. Do you think do you we think all got our tattoos anyway, so she calmed down. But maybe, we were like, maybe she died from the shame. I mean, she felt pretty bad about it. And then I, I had, had that other little cousin, wrench. That my little other cousin got a tattoo, and she was she like sat her down for it. She's like, "Hey, listen, I'm getting a tattoo," and she's like, "I don't like that," and she's like, "I know, but you need to chill." And then she chilled. So it turns out we just needed to sacrifice one of our cousins to be like, hey, chill. I'm telling you we're witches. We're witches. We're witches. I call to the watchtowers of the East. Um, anybody in the comments, if you can tell me what movie that's from, um, I'll give you Hannah Howard for a night. Um, <laughs> it's just for a whole lot. Here's my cash app. No, Hannah Howard is... Uh, I, I want to end uh, the show a little bit because we could talk forever. I have two things to talk about. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about what we are most thankful for this year. Um, I would say that I'm thankful for the relationships that I made you know, doing this comedy stuff online. It was a long shot for me. I didn't ever expect the first show to even last like two comedy quarantines. I didn't I, this is all just something that has just happened and people wanted to keep performing. And so I just, I don't know, I really enjoyed doing it. So I'm thankful for the relationships and the strong relationships I've made with Hannah because of this whole situation. Honestly, anytime I have a show, she's always there. She wants to be a part of it as much as she can. And um, even if a couple of those times it was because she just, it was selfish. She just wanted to do it for her. Um, it is still in some way she wanted to help me out you know what i mean so for sure oh i love you oh Honestly, in my family oh well yeah family <laughs> thanks Lindsay. you're the best <laughs> okay so anyway what i was gonna say is and nick i'm so proud of you for all these shows i I'm, I'm here for it because i want to support you and i'm i just love this little adventure that you've gone on and when you first started it, we all thought this will last a couple of weeks because pretty soon we'll yeah. be out back at Mike's and doing our normal thing. Turns yeah. out it's not like that. We were all um, just a bunch of comedians uh, that found our identity and like livelihood uh, yeah. by getting instant laughs and 
um, I, I like acceptance from an audience and there are no audiences anymore. So, yeah. and, and we could do it online, but it's not the same. Um, but Nick here was like, we're just going to make the best out of it. And we're just going to keep doing it. And the few times that I have said no, I was like, I should have said yes, because it has brought me to a place where I'm like, if I am not doing something creative for myself or any, in any capacity, then I'm just a depressed slob. But, uh, having these shows have really helped me as a person. Yeah. Even though I don't hear the laughter, I get no, the yeah. comments and that's good for me. <laughs> and, yeah. um, Honestly, it's totally, you know, it's, why I decided to go for my podcast and yeah. pursue other things online. And it's been really helpful. So thank you. No, no, you're too sweet. Honestly, I was not prepared for that. Um, I am a cancer. So I, uh, I want to truly show my emotions, but I'm a Scorpio. So I try to hide what's happening. Uh, it's just who I am. Um, no, honestly, that means a lot to hear that because I uh, the way these shows have worked is a lot of the input that you guys have given on how it would be better. Most of these shows wouldn't be what they were without your input because you've done every single show with me, not every week, but you've done every concept I've done. And so, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a treat to have you. So that's why I was like, we have to, we could sit here and gab for days. This show already before we end the last question is already at how much time? Oh my oh, God. Do minutes. minutes. We're literally like, this will be 30 minutes. No, I knew as <laughs> soon as it, I knew as soon as it was. Lizzie Christmas. says we need to have Tom as a guest and I couldn't agree more. I, um, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it is the season for charity. So we should <laughs> to see you. Thank you, Just Lizzie. See. Yeah, maybe we'll get more donations. I feel uh, like she's in my corner and I like her a lot. No, Lindsay is one of the, uh, she's probably the strong, one of the strongest women I know. And I'm not saying that just because she's my sister. She's just endured a lot and she's uh, come out of the other side, like being a businesswoman. She has her own cupcakes. She is like, she's taking care of three kids. Lindsay, the, I, you're yeah, my goddess. She like, really is. She's me? great. She hasn't, she hasn't told that enough. My family, the weird thing about my family is like um, everyone around Christmas normally gets like super emotional, right? Okay, my family, we don't tell each other enough that like how much we love each other because we feel awkward in those moments, you know? Right. It's, so it's always been hard for me to like until recently say how much I really appreciate someone. And so now I make it a point anytime I see someone just to tell them like how proud I am of them just because I'd rather say it because you never know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? I love that. That's yeah. good. We uh, love you, Lindsay. I love you, Lindsay, so much. And Michael, I love that you were on this. I hope Michael, you like, you. you can message me too. I just slide in my DM. Married with seven kids. You don't want that, Nick. Your kids can call me mom. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, the last thing I wanted to end us on is... Um, if you had were super wasted at like your uh, holiday party at your office or something for work mm -hmm. and you went up on stage after two or three shots of Jaeger um, or Rumple Mints, you know, feeling like very uneasy in the stomach, what Christmas karaoke song would you pick if you had to do karaoke like at your Christmas party? Okay, listen, my instinct, my gut. I think in my drunkest form would go with Brian Carey, but. Oh my God, you're so brave. But to, in an effort to not be basic, I think I would do some rendition of Carol of the Bells where I literally just go. Da, <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, I was like, I was just imagining you like octave jumping from each part. Yeah. I don't see a problem. Christmas shoes. I would, at least three chairs would turn around for you. Okay, I have something to say about Christmas shoes. Do y'all know so, that there are three movies about Christmas shoes? Go to Pure Flicks, watch that train like uh, garbage. It's might see Kyle horrible. Porter. Kyle Porter's in it. Neil Patrick Harris is in the sequel. 
how they got a gay, I don't know. Yeah, Kyle Porter is actually one of the shoes. <laughs> he's just one of the shoes. He's, uh, just one of <laughs> he's just one of the shoes. What was the question I asked you about? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> oh, karaoke, what are you singing? Oh, okay, if I was hammered at a Christmas party, which like I'd never have an office job because <laughs> I hate cubicles. Um, I just hate, you know, square shaped things in general. Um, but if That's I- weird. Like, go on. My Christmas song to sing if I'm sober is uh, Chestnuts Roasting on Open Fire because I know I can nail it. I've sang it ever since I was little. But if I'm wasted, white girl wasted, I there's no breath support, so I'm not going to hit notes very strong, okay? So I would have to sing something that's like comical, like Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. That's good. Solid. Yeah, but with like an accent, like a country accent. I'd really get it. Kyle just tuned in. Uh, he has defended his uh, pure flicks and said that he has moved on to Amazon Prime for his two lines. You know what's so funny about this is uh, Kyle Porter has a habit of showing up to shows and rehearsals, you know, an hour late. Half it's like whenever the fuck he wants. I would add him to this Zoom call, but I feel like he's just going to have like, you know, fire breathing dragon in the background and naked, half naked. Yeah, he'll be walking he's around like, some apartment getting COVID or something. Yeah, he's like, there's a girl in there. There's a girl, I swear. It's a boy, Kyle. We all know it. Just, it's okay. Her name's, her name's, Mike. Her name's Michael. I mean, Michelle. Okay, Kyle said he's actually in a lot of the movies, so now I'm interested and I'm probably going to watch it tonight, but I'm probably just going to leave a shit review to balance the fact that I gave it a view. You know what I mean? No, I mean, yeah, and I, it's, it, they're just happy to be getting a review, you know? <laughs> um, I just want to, since we're talking about it, uh, Kyle Porter, he's one of our good comedy friends. Um, he's an amazing actor, and you'll see why he doesn't get that many gigs if you watch Ivy and Mistletoe. Um, it's a Pure Flix, which is a Jesus-y movie company. It's a Jesus-y Christmas movie. And uh, yeah. uh, apparently I hear that Kyle drinks a lot of coffee in it, so. No, yeah. And really, it's so, up. It's, a, it's a gay love story because at the end, he falls in love with the idea of Jesus. It's so cool. It's really cool. He loves it. God bless you for that. No, God bless us, everyone. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming from uh, a retired Tiny Tim. I was Tiny Tim in A Christmas Carol. Of course you were. Of course yeah. you were. I'm pretty sure I was Scrooge. It's fine. No, I, I blew my elementary school director to get the part, and he cast me as Tiny Tim because of my sausage. Apparently. Nick, I'm concerned that your um, teacher was a pedophile. Yeah, um, he said, uh, my favorite thing he ever said was, uh, this is your fault. <laughs> I think uh -oh. that <laughs> was, yeah okay so stay tuned after this uh i will definitely give you my therapist's phone number yeah i just can't wait to get you know if you go to that therapist 10 times you have a punch card and if you get to 10 it gives you a free sub i'm just saying free lunch and therapy hello yeah a free sub meals. sandwich to soak up my tears yes please yeah they give you a gift card to go to cheesecake factory but it's closing oh all I want for Christmas is cheesecake factory. Listen, trauma. You want to talk about trauma? Waited tables at Cheesecake Factory and never again. I'm telling you, you have to be a genius to work there. Uh, thank you. It was very difficult. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, that, I didn't mean you're a genius. Maybe you cheated. Uh, you know. <laughs> Touche. I was the, I was like the worst one. I don't know why they didn't fire me. I was the worst one. <laughs> You have to get a hundred on the test and you're like, I didn't know it was graham cracker crust. I didn't know. It was I didn't know. I thought it was the Oreo crust. Well, let's do our little cheers together. Okay. Hold on, thing. I gotta get my box and refill. Be yourself. Mine's almost empty, but that's because I'm being a good Christian boy. Well, my box is almost empty. Is that the same? Oh, her box is never empty. Uh Charlemagne. Is, is it, it this way? Yeah, under your name. Okay. Two, three. You can't really see my what? Move it, move the glass towards the camera more. Like push it. Yeah, okay. One. 
Well, okay, let's two, three. Cheers, bitch. That was pretty good. We'll pass it. Uh, you guys have a wonderful Christmas. Me and Hannah will be uh, stressing out in our own ways. And uh, stay tuned on, uh, follow me on Instagram to find out if I have COVID. Yes, Instagram. We should do each other's Instagram at Miss Hannah Howard. Cash app, dollar sign bitch and Hannah if you want it. Yeah. Give me $5 because this wine is $13 for a box and I'm out. She was talking, you said this line? She's talking about cocaine. Wine. I'm not, <laughs> my nose was screwed by a Q tip today. I'm not doing cocaine. Yeah, I feel you. Okay, and then we have little Nick Hawk. You can find him on Twitter, Instagram, and Venmo at Mr. Nick Hawk. Very easy to find. I should probably change my shit to all coincide with each other because that's yeah. handy. Don't uh, spell Nick Hawk with a K at the end of Nick because you'll get a gigolo from a, uh, a HBO show. Oh my God, don't you dare put a K at the end of Nick Hawk because then- He's very good looking. You'll donate to the wrong charity. Yeah, his is just about laying some pipe. Mine is about my pipe dreams. Um, so it's- very Listen, this wine, I'm, I got drunk. I started drinking at the start of this and I'm, I'm drunk now. You're doing wonderful. Uh, tune in next week. Hannah will be picking the two topics because I trust her um, and it's gonna be amazing. So uh, let these ho, ho, hoes go and drink some more. Lindsay, thank you for tuning in. Michael, thank you for tuning in. I loved having family on for this. This was really fun. It was the Lindsay, perfect episode to have our family members. I'm going to FaceTime you, Lindsay, after this. So get ready. Yeah, get ready. Because that drunk FaceTime is another thing that I have to deal with most of the time. It's, so coming, to you in, it's coming to you in three, two, one. Bye.